Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick, and this is our first run review of the Nike Alpha Fly 3. So the Nike Alpha Fly 3, obviously a very exciting new racing shoe from Nike. It was officially announced yesterday as launching on January the 4th next year, but it's been around in the ether already this year, obviously used by elites like Kelvin Kipton when he set the marathon world record at the Chicago Marathon, and review samples have gone out to from Nike to the likes of myself so we can review it ahead of that date. It's going to cost £285 or $285 when it launches, which is a price rise on the Alpha Fly 2. It's not an absolutely massive one. I did fear this would go over $300, £300, so at least those fears haven't been realized but but it is another price rise for the shoe it's the lightest alpha fly ever it weighs in at 220 grams in my uk size 9 or us 10 the original alpha fly 1 was high 220s in my size and the alpha fly 2 was pushing towards 250 grams so it's a substantial decrease in weight for sure you've still got an 8 millimeter drop same as on the alpha fly 2 and the stack height is listed as basically just under 40 millimeters in a us 10 so it hits the regulations set by world athletics so most interesting changes to the shoe are generally around the mid sole which is now one continuous piece of foam there you haven't got that huge cutout that almost broke up the midsole in the first two versions of the shoe nike says the continuous design creates a smoother heel to toe transition and no matter what your foot strike is so it will suit runners of all levels they've also sculpted the midsole a bit to remove some of the foam obviously there's big cutouts in the bottom there all of that is to help reduce weight which is why it's been able to drop so much weight for the third generation they've redone the midsole on the pods so there's more engagement of the pods on the run which obviously are the key feature that separates the alpha fly from the vaporfly 3 there's those air zoom pods that you have under the forefoot instead of just using zoom x foam and nike has always said that those pods just deliver a little bit more energy return than having the foam alone you've got the full length carbon fly plate in the shoe as always which and it's now been widened a little bit on the medial side to try and help with stability you've got an atom knit 3.0 upper which is obviously very breathable you can see there it's a nice open weave you have this booty style fit a fair bit of padding around the achilles obviously it goes quite high on the back of the shoe there to try and create a nice tight fit with this one piece upper the uh, stays for the uh, laces are now integrated into the upper to try and create a little bit less pressure in that area when you're lacing the shoe up nice and tight for racing and nike also says there's a new last here which should reduce the pressure on the arch uh, when you're running this has been a notable complaint with the alpha fly with previous versions a little bit of pinching around the arch you've got the fast shot rubber outsole which has pretty minimal coverage you can see there are those two little sections of foam at the heel there to create some extra durability there then obviously quite a lot of foam on the forefoot including these big round sections that show where the um, air zoom pods are uh, nike is quite bullish about durability though so in its testing it's been over 200 miles for all of its testers it should be a fairly durable shoe for a racing shoe like this that might be a little bit of a nod obviously towards the adios pro evo one which uh, came out with the idea that it's only gonna be at its best for one marathon that kind of thing as i mentioned before there's all these cutouts here to reduce weight but you haven't got that gaping you know middle of the midsole cutout there which almost creates a decoupled midsole with the alpha fly 2 so i've been a very big fan of the alpha fly with the first two generations i used the alpha fly 1 to run my first sub 230 marathon i ran also ran a 229 marathon in the alpha fly 2 and i recently brought the alpha fly 1 out of retirement to do some races in it as well to remind myself of the feel of it very excited to get out in the three hopefully it's the best version yet so let's put it to the test so hello and welcome to a wintry london it's very very cold i'm about to head out and do my first run in the alpha fly 3 uh, it was meant to be a rest day today but obviously you get a shoe like this in you've got to go and run so the plan is to do a nice long warm-up get moving and then run a steady 10k kind of to feel so i'd hope to get pushing towards my marathon pace around 330 340 a k uh similar actually to what i did actually on the first couple of runs i did in the alpha fly 2 which is just to run down to a nice flat area go on feel and just start going through the gears and see what kind of pace comes out so yeah very excited to get going in the shoe need to stop talking now put my gloves on because <laughs> i'm already starting to shiver So I just finished up the 10k, uh, which ran uh, something like 35, uh, 30 odd, something like that, on a nice busy road near me, which I'm still by. That felt you know, really, really good. You know, one day Nike will make a bad carbon plate running shoe, but today is not that day. That felt pretty extraordinary. Like you got all that bounce, all that flight with it. And then the first, uh, well, the first block of it, some bits of it were with the wind, and you get that flowing, bounding feeling when you're running with the wind in the shoe, and then turn around into the wind and it's noticeably lighter the pickups better compared to previous versions and you get a lot more of a tippy forward feeling i think than previous versions which are very much about that booming bounce it's a little bit like nike has split the difference between the alpha fly and the vapor fly to give you that real feeling of being tipped forward and then the difference here with the alpha fly is that you get a very noticeable feeling as you push onto the air pods which are a bit firmer noticeable you know, hit the foot a bit better and then you, know, you get bounded on your way so 
Yeah, it's just one run. And all these shoes feel great. Like I ran a great 10K in the Alphalow one recently, you know, proper race and it felt really good. But this certainly feels like Nike has made good changes. Like you're not going to suddenly get an out of the world performance. Like running in the Alphalow too, you're a lot heavier than this. You're with the wind felt, the performance are just as good. It's actually really the difference was more into the wind, the second half of the run where you get that extra turnover, the lightness of this shoe and the slightly more tippy forward feeling from that midsole. So I'm a heel striker, especially on my left foot and yeah, you just feel like a little bit more of smooth flow through there. So yeah, it's a really great first ride out there. I absolutely loved it. Like just, even just starting down the road from my warm up, just a big smile on my face. You know, it's really cold. It's not a nice day to go out and doing a hard run. And, but hit the flat bit and it just opened up and it just felt so, so good. So yeah, big tick, first ride in the Alpha Fly 3. One more quick note before I get home, have a bit more of a think about it. Uh, it's still loud. You might even hear it now. It's squeaking a bit. <laughs> squeaking still makes that big, loud landing noise you get from the outfit. I'll try and uh, put it in the video now. Maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't. I don't know if I've worked out how to do that. Uh, anyway, yeah, loud shoes still. Squeak, squeak. That doesn't bother me. I know a lot of people do get very annoyed by it though. So very early thoughts to kind of summarize how that went today. I think uh, Nike has made changes that are going to be crowd-pleasing changes to the Alpha Fly 3. It's like they have identified some things that people did complain about with the shoe. I've gone out and remedied them, especially the big drop in weight being probably the biggest one of all of those. Like that was a nice 10K at around my marathon pace. Felt very cruisy, felt very fresh at the end, really like, enjoyed it. Just a really enjoyable run. Like I say, smile on my face during the run, finished it, wanting just to get it back in the shoe and do some more running. And that's obviously a great feeling on a first run in a shoe. Do you think it's interesting? To me, it feels like the Vapor on the Alphalaya are coming a bit closer together with the third generation of the shoe, with, whereas with the second generations, I think they moved quite a bit apart. You had that more aggressive feeling of the Vaporfly 2, a lot lighter too, whereas the Alphalaya 2 was a big, comfortable, pretty stable, bounding super shoe. And now with the Vaporfly 3, you've got a little bit more foam in there. It's, it is still a lot lighter than the Alphalaya, and that helps with the quick turnover, and it feels a bit more nimble and aggressive on short events. But the Alphalaya is now that bit, a fair bit lighter. It's got a more of a bouncy, bounding feel, but you have now got that easier turnover in it, the slightly more tippy forward feeling. There's certainly lots more similarities between the shoes than there are differences compared to the other shoes on the market just because the main thing is the zoom x foam and the fly plate which is obviously similar across both of them and that gives you the main feeling you get from these shoes which is that you know exceptional bouncy propulsive feel so yeah i think the changes will be pleasing to people and i probably will end up being more popular than the alpha fly too like i really like the alpha fly too i think it's a shoe that's easy to dismiss and criticize when you're not using it but then when i was running in it it just felt so good and like if i'd left it alone for a while i'd go off it a bit it is really heavy it looks a bit weird and then i'd pull it on and i'd use it and I'd go, it's just so good just delivered so well in that marathon i think my five mile pb is in that shoe as well but you know it is heavy and that's a big off-putting thing for lots of runners i understand that and bringing that weight down while retaining the bouncy feeling is about as good an update as you could hope for from the Alphalife 3 and from that first run that feels pretty much what you're getting here so I do think it'll be a lot more popular with runners especially those who came to really love the Alpha Fly 1 with the 3 now you've got a shoe that feels a bit more like it gives you that slightly bouncier feeling the one had and the more nimble feeling and you're now going to get an even lighter shoe which I do think has that more tippy forward feeling because of the way the midsole is now set up but yeah loads more testing to do obviously like this is very much very initial thoughts here I'm going to race in it next week hopefully get another race in it in December hopefully some of the other people on the channel will get it as well so we can do a multi-tester on it in due course but very strong first impression for the alpha fly three So a quick word on fit. First, I say it's, uh, it's easier to get the Alpha Fly 3 on than the Alpha Fly 2, which will please some people. I think it's a really good fit in my normal running shoe size. It's the same size I've had across every generation of the Alpha Fly, same in having the Vaporfly, other Nike shoes, and good amount of room in the toe box. And the hold around the midfoot and heel is really good. It was really easy just to pull it on, pull all those laces a little bit through the new stays. I was a bit worried about the new stays. Like, I don't know, maybe they feel more fragile than normal ones just because I'm not used to them. But yeah, tugged nice and hard on the laces to get that racing fit, but no lace bite at all. Good secure hold around the heel and the midfoot when running hard, rounding corners, that kind of thing. And, and it was pretty easy to get that fit. Like with you know other racing shoes, got to fiddle a bit more of the laces, maybe heel lock them with this. Pulled it on, pulled them tight. Did them up and off I went and the fit was great. Yeah, good amount of room in the toe box, fine around the heel and midfoot, so no concerns at all. I didn't have the arch problems with the Alpha Fly 1 and 2. Like I noticed a little bit of arch pressure very occasionally and I didn't notice that today, but I didn't always notice it on previous generations. So can't really comment too much on whether that's been fixed in this generation, but it did feel fine to me on the run in terms of that. But I couldn't really say for sure if there's a big difference there because I didn't have those problems with the older shoes. That's our first look at the Alpha Fly 3. Please let us know what you want to know about the shoe in the comments below. I'll try and get to them uh, as quick as I can. And we'll obviously we'll come back with full reviews, race tests, all that down the line. But for now, please do like and subscribe. Ring the little bell so you get notified when we drop another video. And yeah, we'll see you next time.